Hi, boys and girls. Today we are continuing our lesson on the history of Earth with lesson two in our Knowledge 7 domain. The topic of our lesson today is the Earth Inside Out, part one. Here we go. As always, let's start with some words we need to know. First word we need to listen for is the word core. Core is the center of the Earth. An example of this is, it is impossible to journey to the Earth's core because it is too hot for humans. The next word to listen for is crust, the outermost layer of the Earth. An example of this is, the workers drilled a few inches into the Earth's crust. Our next word to listen for is eroded or wore away. An example of this is wind and sand eroded the writing on the sphinx. Our next word, layer, a part that lies over or under another part. An example of this, the baker added a thin layer of chocolate to the cake. And our last word to listen for, mantle. The layer of the earth between the crust and the core. An example, the mantle is the layer beneath the earth's crust. Let's review our where are we chart. We already know about our solar system and where we are in our solar system, we live on planet earth. On planet earth, we live on the continent North America. On North America, we live on the country United States of America. On the United States of America, we live in Pennsylvania. And in Pennsylvania, we live in the city of Erie. And then there's you. You are in your home where you live on planet Earth. Let's begin our story. Listen carefully to find out what is inside planet Earth. As I'm reading our story, boys and girls, remember those three important words that Jerry the geologist said to remember when thinking about geology. Heat, pressure, and time. All three cause changes to the Earth. Let's begin our story. Hello, Jerry the geologist here again. I woke up this morning and started digging this hole in the ground. Each time I push my shovel into the earth, I bring up a load of soil. And I've noticed that each load of soil has a few rocks in it. I'm digging this hole today to teach you about the outer layer of the earth. The earth has layers sort of like a sheet and a blanket, are different layers of covers on a bed. Beneath your backyard, the sidewalk, the school, actually beneath most every place people live, there is soil, which is sometimes called dirt. Different types of soil appear in the earth in layers. Each layer of soil is made of different things, which can give it a different color or a different texture. The thickness of the soil varies or is different depending on where you live. In some places on earth, the soil is several feet thick. In other places on earth, it is just a few inches. And in some places on earth, there is no soil at all. Here, where I live, the soil is rich and dark near the surface. However, as I dig deeper into the earth, I can see a definite change in color. The color in this soil has changed from dark brown to bright red. That color change means I have reached a layer of reddish clay it's getting a little harder to dig now, so I'll have to use my pickaxe.
clink. My pick just hit something really hard below the red clay. The farther down I go, the harder the clay becomes. Pretty soon I will hit bedrock, a solid layer of hard rock that I won't be able to dig through with my shovel. I dug this hole to show you that there are different layers of soil and rock beneath your feet. The farther you go into the earth, the more things change. The dark soil on top is fairly easy to dig into with a shovel, but the deeper layer of clay, but the deeper layer of clay is harder to dig because it has been compacted or squished by the weight or pressure of everything above it. Remember, pressure is one of the three words that Jerry the geologist said that we should keep in mind. This diagram shows you what the inside of the earth would look like if you could cut out a big chunk of it. The crust is the outermost layer of the earth, represented here by a thin brown line. I have been digging into the very outermost portion of the crust today. Most of the earth is rock, and most of that rock is beneath the crust in the other three layers. The mantle, which is red, the outer core, orange, and the inner core, yellow, which is how I've colored them on my diagram. The distance from the surface where you and I live all the way to the middle of the inner core is nearly 4,000 miles. This is one thick planet. I will teach you more about the mantle, outer core, and inner core next time. For now, let's focus on the thinnest layer, the crust. The Earth's crust is between 3 and 20 miles, depending on where you are on Earth. Most people, plants and animals, live on the surface or outermost edge of the crust. Remember, the Earth's surface is covered by oceans and continents. Everything alive on Earth lives in, on, or above these oceans and continents on the crust. For example, you and your dog live on the crust. Worms and moles, on the other hand, live underground or in the crust. Birds fly in the air above the crust, and fish swim in the water, that is, flowing on the crust. The crust is where geologists like me look to learn about the history of the earth. In the crust, we find different layers of rock, which teach us about different periods of time in earth's history. Remember that the Earth is over four and a half billion years old. Each layer of rock was formed during a different period of time in the Earth's history, so we can study each layer to learn about each period of time. Geologists search the crust for clues about the history of the Earth. I already introduced you to this place called the Grand Canyon. Here, the geology of the Earth's crust sits like an open book waiting to be read. Layer upon layer of different rock tells the geologist when this place was covered with a cool ocean and when it was not. Geological, or Earth changes, can do all sorts of tricky things to the rocks on the Earth's crust. These formations in Arches National Park in the state of Utah show what thousands of years of wind, rain, and ice can do to this type of stone. Some rocks are mysterious. This is called Uluru, or Ayers Rock. It is the only tall thing in an otherwise flat, barren grassland in the middle of Australia. Geologists have figured out that this is a remnant left over from a time when the entire surface there was covered in this type of rock. A remnant is something left over or remaining. 
Eventually, all the other rock eroded due to wind and rain, and only this one mound of rock remained. Different places tell different stories. Not all interesting rocks are above ground. This photo was taken down in a cave, which is a large hole or space underground. A cave is basically an area in the Earth's crust that has been hollowed out for one reason or another, usually as a result of underground water flowing in and dissolving the rock over millions of years. Caves are really amazing places to explore. People usually do not think too much about what is happening underground, deep below our feet. But the fact is that what happens deep underground has everything to do with what we see in the world around us. Next time, we will take a closer look at what's happening in those other layers. I'd better go ahead and fill in this hole now. See you next time. Boys and girls, I hope you had fun listening to Jerry the Geologist. Enjoy the rest of your activities today, and I'll see you back here for our next story. Have a wonderful day.